The coronavirus pandemic is not ending anytime soon, and we're all having to make adjustments. Universities are making their own changes, and with one eye on course fees and another on the rents they draw, they're putting us at risk for it. Our university, the University of Edinburgh, has proposed what they're calling a hybrid teaching model, one closely matched by other universities. So what could this mean for staff and students? In a nutshell, hybrid teaching, sometimes known as blended learning, means classes being run simultaneously in person and online, with students paying standard fees for the service. Lectures and tutorials will be streamed online, with a stream chat room running alongside, and those in other time zones that can't attend real-time will have to make do with recordings. Labs may be irregular, with different resources available to different students, sometimes only through a web stream. Whether labs are in-person will be determined by adjustments in social distancing legislation, rather than the advice from the university's many immunology and medical experts, which may leave the university slow to respond to new outbreaks. Bringing any students back on campus opens up risks of transmission that are non-existent when we stay physically distant. Every building that is opened needs a full team of cleaners, servitors, security and other staff to prepare and keep running. We might assume that the risk is higher for large lectures, but small enclosed spaces in which multiple people talk leads to greater droplet spread and transmission risk. Effectively, we will have to choose between putting ourselves and others at risk of spreading the virus or to pay full fees for little more than a subscription service. The universities are mostly presenting these plans as a response to coronavirus, but most of them have been in the works for years. The Edinburgh hybrid model is the result of years of planning to minimize wages and maximize fees and rents. There are significant concerns that the changes brought about in this crisis will be here to stay if we don't organize to pressure the universities to prioritize learning over profits. It's clear that the university's motives are not as pure as they suggest. The profiteering attitude of the uni is barefaced at times. Its proposal document even suggests that students who don't own equipment needed for hybrid teaching could purchase laptops from the university. Disregarding the fact that students who don't own a laptop usually don't have one because they can't afford one. This is coming from an institution that has seen over a 20% rise in tuition fee income in the last four years. Contrary to what they want us to believe, the university can afford to find a coronavirus transition. It could, for example, consider liquidating some of its extensive non-academic property. To minimize costs, Universities are passing the work on to regular staff and students. Free student labor will be exploited in several ways. Instead of employing additional support staff, the university expects us to be our own support network. We'll be asked to create shared digital notes on tutorials and organize online extracurricular meetings. There has even been a suggestion to have international students produce questions for those in the UK as tutorial work. The university also plans to use what they call student interns and helpers to digitize content. That kind of phrasing suggests that this will not be paid work. There is no one-stop easy solution. A transition like this will require difficult decisions and will incur costs, and universities are trying to avoid both of these. Many suggest that going fully online is the answer. This could delay in-person teaching for a whole academic year, making it possibly the safest option. A learning technologist we spoke to supported this as the most feasible, safe choice. The downside to this option is that it puts more pressure on staff, widens the distance between privileged and underprivileged students, and enables the university to continue eroding teaching staff's rights. If you're an art student that works on physical material or performance, you don't need us to tell you that online study is no replacement for the real thing and participation will be heavily moderated by the supplies and space that individual students have available to them. Paul suggests that many students would prefer online learning, but some academic teaching staff noted that online learning may produce a precarious gig economy to connect students and educators. Another option is to delay teaching until 2021, either by semester or by a whole year, and to pay staff for the interim period. Many students who have the option to take a gap year, are taking this option themselves to avoid heavy impacts to their education from the crisis. However, 
the late start teaching would heavily disrupt normal functioning, which could be extremely negatively impactful on students, especially neurodiverse and traumatized students, whose numbers are significantly rising in the lockdown. If only one semester is delayed, this would also put huge pressure on learning technologists and other non-academic staff by creating a summer semester right in their busiest time of year as they prepare for the next year of tuition. A whole delay year would be the only way to deal with it, but this would incur even more disruption for students. Universities won't acknowledge options like this because they would have to pay additional wages and they would lose up to a whole semester of rent on their extensive real estate and other facilities. Hybrid teaching is the university's latest attempt to dodge all responsibility so that they can focus on profits. The university needs business as usual to keep their property empire growing and continue its fight against staff working conditions. We need to force them to change their priorities from endlessly growing income to our well-being. Join us in opposing hybrid teaching at all universities and calling for the universities to do their jobs by solving these problems for good.